everyone. Um, so super happy to be here. Um, so just uh, as an introduction, um, I'm uh, replacing uh, Dr. Feiyushu, which is the head of uh, SAP AI. Um, and uh, I will today talk about artificial intelligence. So my name is um, and Sebastian. I'm working as a project manager in the SAP AI team. And um, I actually have a specific focus on um, strategic customers and also on partner management. So um, let's talk about AI and uh, actually review a bit the agenda. So we will first talk about AI in the daily life. Um, then we will talk about AI artificial intelligence in businesses. Um, and uh, then I will give you a quick overview of the SAP AI um, portfolio, solution portfolio. and right after a specific focus on uh, our chatbot building platform, which is a typical conversational AI. And then we will finish by some key takeaways. And um, if we time permits, hopefully we'll have a... Um, first, let, let's talk about um, AI in the daily life. And I would like to begin this presentation by um, a quick exercise with you and talk about how is AI in your daily life. So. Uh, as you can see on your screen, we now uh, triggered a poll. Uh, so please feel free to answer to this uh, poll. Don't worry, it's totally anonymous. And I would really like to understand um, what is your perception of artificial intelligence. So how do you use AI? Do you use it every day, uh, every time, everywhere? Do you use it just a couple of times? So not every time. Um, do you, uh, I mean, maybe you don't use AI at all. You don't want to use it or you don't use AI artificial intelligence at all. And the fourth answer is that maybe you are not sure about um, if you are using or not artificial intelligence. So um, please feel uh, free to answer to this uh, poll and we will discuss uh, together the results in, in a few minutes. So. Um, I would like to first start with uh, um, a first statement, right? Uh, the first statement that we uh, have is like, it's, it's a question yeah, actually for you. Um, you every day, I mean, you and me, we every day send a lot of messages, a lot of text. So it can be like a very short message that you send uh, through your smartphone to your friends or family. Um, or it can be um, like an email that you are writing to, um, uh, I don't know, again, some friend or some teacher or whatever. Um, it can be a post on a social network or a DM on a social network. I mean, we send like, um, you know, per year thousands of text messages. So now the question is, um, let's imagine that you would have to deliver those messages manually, personally to the person that you want to reach. So it would be good if it's your neighbor, but imagine that you are sending a message like 5,000 kilometers away. So of course it's like um, now in 2021, uh, out of mind to things like that. Maybe it was the case like one century ago, but in 2021, this is not the case anymore because what happened is uh, thanks to digitalization, now it's like super natural to just send a message and in a matter of uh, seconds or milliseconds, the message is delivered to uh, the right audience, right? So this is the first point which, uh, that, that we have to get in mind. The second one, which is a bit tied to the first one also, is um, the other examples that I will take. Let's imagine that you're searching an information, right? So you, you, you have a question in mind and you want to have the answer. So let's now imagine that you don't know where to find the answer. So you go into, let's say, um, a library, okay? You go into the library and you try to pick a book, first book, and you search for the for the, the answer, right? You don't find the answer. So you say, okay, so it's not in this book. So you take another book, right? You say, no, it's actually not in this book. So you pick a third one and then you find the, the answer, but actually the answer is not exactly what you wanted. Um, it's not complete, right? So you say, okay, that's okay, but it's not everything that I wanted. So you just go again and again and pick some book until, you finally find the documentation and, and, and the answers that you want. Uh, so, of course, again, as the first statement is completely out of mind to think that uh, uh, in 1321, right? Because we don't do that anymore. What we do, uh, what you do, is that we go on, um, um, we open the computer, we go on a, on, a, on a searching motor, we just type the request that we have and we find the answer again in a matter of seconds because 
um, uh, the, the, the system knows what we are looking for. He knows where to search. So he, he knows the context uh, of the question and the, 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 the place of the answer. And also what is also interesting is that a part of the answer, um, the system also gives you some extra links, extra document, uh, extra information that you maybe weren't expecting at the beginning, but it's useful, right? So you're reading a text and then you have, I don't know, recommendations that say, okay, so you should also click on this link to read this additional um, document, for instance, right? So um, again, what happens here is that um, we, thanks to digi digitalization, um, have all those processes that are now super automatic and natural for us, right? So um, now maybe let's have a look to um, the results uh, of the poll. So I see that many of you have answered. So thanks for thanks for that. Uh, so as we can see, um, we have forty five percent of people. So almost half of you, we use AI every day, uh, and thirty five we use AI from time to time. Okay, so which leads us to like eighty percent who use AI. Uh, sometime on a daily basis or sometime less than on a daily basis, right? Or at least things uh, about that. And then we have a no to 5% and a 15% who are not really sure if they use AI. So that's super interesting. And in fact, I was a bit expecting this kind of result to be, to be really honest. Um, because the thing is that artificial intelligence is like surrounding us um, almost everywhere in many tools, in many services, um, in many processes, we have artificial intelligence. So let me give you a, a, a bit of example, um, uh, a list of examples that we can share where AI is, is present, right? So the first one would be like chatbot and an assistant, virtual assistant, digital assistant, right? Uh, so basically you're, uh, let's say on a website and you are um, on an e-commerce website. So you are browsing, you know, the catalog. And then you have this web chat that is popping up and tell you, okay, how can I help you? Can I help you find the product you want? Um, can I help you in your buyer journey, right? Uh, so this is the first example. The second example that we all know now is the, you know, this facial recognition systems that we have, for instance, in in the mobiles where you just, you know, put your face um, in the in the camera of your phone and then the phone unlock um, itself by recognizing you, right? So this is the second example. And also another super interesting example is the algorithm um, in social networks. So for instance, you all know, we, we all have this kind of thing where when we go on a social network, we have some recommendation like, oh, you should read this post or, uh, you know, on your own page, um, you have some posts from your friends or sometimes from other people that you don't even know, but the topic might be interesting for you. Uh, or also on the ads where the ads are kind of personalized regarding what, who you are and what you do, right? So this is just a, a few examples of how AI, uh, because as you can imagine, AI is, is behind all of that, right? So how AI can really um, 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 improve, all, again, all the tools and all the processes that you use on a daily basis, right? So um, now I would like to um, talk to you very quickly about the three main capabilities uh, that we have in AI. So the first one is automation. Um, by automation, we mean that AI can um, really behave like human, which means that it can understand how, human are, uh, how humans are doing some tasks uh, sometimes some tedious, repetitive tasks. And then the, uh, I mean, the machine through the AI can just reiterate this task and do it on behalf of the human, right? So it's specifically interesting if you are talking about, as I said, kind of repetitive tasks that you are doing, for instance, in the company uh, every day, like it's always the same thing. So there, AI will just learn about what you are doing and help the machine do this action um, again, on your behalf for you. And of course, it will save a lot of time and a lot of energy, right? And you will be able to focus on more interesting topics, obviously. Um, the second one is the natural user experience. So uh, there, uh, it means that um, AI can um, really, let's say, um, help you using the tools, right? 
um, and also using it as if you were interacting, for instance, with other human, or if you were interacting naturally. So it's not anymore what we saw, like a very like strict processes that you have to follow to click somewhere and everywhere. No, now AI gives you um, the possibility to uh, interact with, for instance, big softwares or a big website or big database or whatever, right? And use it in a smarter and a faster way. So this is, for instance, an example that we can have with um, um, a chatbot, right? So uh, I will talk to you that uh, later in this presentation, but for instance, chatbots can really help, you know, browsing some uh, very complex uh, software and just, you know, helping you uh, going into this, um, uh, you know, into the software and just, again, understand how you used to do that and just helping you do that in, in, in a smarter way, in a faster way, right? So this is what we call the natural uh, user experience because you don't have to modify the way you use it. It's just uh, the machines that will um, just help you doing, again, in a smarter and faster way, right? So you don't have to just um, adapt yourself to the machine. The machine has to adapt itself to you, right? Um, and the third one is about optimization, prediction, and insights. So it's a bit um, a combination of both of the the, 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 the first one, but the, the first boss one, um, because here the system just analyze the way you do something and just give you the keys and give the, yeah, let's say give you the keys, we can say that, to do it again faster and smarter, which means that, for instance, all about recommendation. So um, you're browsing, I don't know, um, um, a catalog, for instance, right? And you're like um, struggling with finding what you want or you find some products and whatever. And then the system will just analyze that and give you some keys in order to maybe find the products that you wanted and it will analyze what you what you are searching and say maybe i can recommend to see this product or this web page or this item or this document right so again here ai helps you using the tools and going through the processes uh where you go every day again in your company but also outside i mean in your future company or outside of the company right on a daily basis so this is the three main capabilities automating um natural user experience and again optimization and prediction so now i talked about how ai can really help you on a daily basis right in your daily life but of course or everything that I just said can be also applied into businesses, into companies, into your future um, companies. So how um, can we analyze that? Um, we have a, a very interesting notion of intelligent enterprise. So basically, intelligent enterprise is the way that companies are using their own tool in a smarter way, in a faster way, in a more intelligent way way that they used to do right so of course for that uh, they need some ai capabilities and under the ai umbrella we can um have several let's say items like for instance machine learning right um so machine learning is just um, the simple fact to teach systems or computers or machine how to spot some specific patterns and connect those uh, specific patterns to specific actions, right? So like kind of recognizing something and then acting uh, regarding what they just recognized, right? Um, and we do that by showing a big, big volume of data or data set, as we say, okay? So it means that instead of having um, a programmer who writes instruction on um, how to solve a problem, um, the computer just learns from experience uh, that it has, again, through big data sets, right? So this is what we call machine learning because the machine is learning, right? I this is ex exactly the fact. Um, and uh, another example is um, about uh, RPA. So we have uh, IRPA, for instance, which is one of the tools that we have in, in SAP. So robotic process automation, we probably heard a lot RPA. Um, so basically this is um, using some robots or sometimes we call it 
bots, which doesn't have to be mixed with chatbots, right? So robots or bots. So using them in order to just, you know, automatize um, business processes, right? So just not really about a conversation, but just automating a task or processes, right? And um, basically those technologies that we have, AI and um, beyond that, machine learning, RPA, et cetera, can just help the enterprise being even more intelligent by getting analysis. So we just, I mean, the system like analyze data, analyze data sets, um, optimization, optimization of, again, optimization of data, uh, but also optimization of processes. Um, recommendation, as I previously say, so we kind of recommend regarding your history, what you did, what you do on a daily basis, it kind of recommend and imagine what you are going to do in order for you to save some time, right? And um, automation, so as I said uh, previously also, uh, so the system can just um, automate some tedious and repetitive tasks. And uh, last but not least, also data extraction, which means that extracting for a big set of data some very important uh, keys and um, uh, data, right? Um, and all of that for the benefit of, as you can imagine, the customer and also the employees, right? So this is why we always talk about customer experience and employee experience. So this is how AI can really help the enterprise being more intelligent. So now let's have a look into um, uh, the SAP artificial intelligence portfolio. So what do we do at SAP uh, for uh, artificial intelligence? So basically we have three, uh, let's say, layers, if I can say. So the first one are um, um, solutions that we have or uh, business processes that we have who uh, are um, uh, embedding several of our products, several of our services, right? So we have SAP Cash App, uh, automatic inverse processing, also a future digital assistant that will use conversational AI, those kind of like solutions that somewhere take from some AI capabilities in order to um, uh, give a high value for uh, the final customers, right? The final users. Then in the layer below, uh, as I previously explained, we have the products, the pure products and services um, uh, with AI within SAP. So we have, for instance, SAP business services, uh, which is a set of different services like uh, ticket, service ticket engines, which, which kind of create extract information and most of all, create some uh, tickets regarding the information um, they have. So support ticket, for instance, right? So you can recognize the priority, the title, description, you can categorize the ticket and whatsoever. All of that in a smart and intelligent way. Um, we also have, uh, as I said before, document information extraction. So extracting some uh, pieces from a document like uh, the, 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 the title, the, the customer, the date, uh, the, the different item into the document and uh, whatsoever. Um, the second bucket is SAP concessional AI. I will have a focus on that in the next few minutes. So chatbot, right? And also uh, SAP process automation. And as I just say, for instance, I took the example of uh, uh, RPA, uh, robotic process automation, right? And the last layer is kind of, um, let's say, um, technical layer where uh, uh, business services, uh, conversational AI, process automation, I mean, all these stuff that are um, uh, above can rely on. So we have, for instance, our very uh, last product, which is called uh, AI Core and AI Launchpad, um, which give you the possibility to build your um, own model and to manage your own models. Uh, we have also SAP ADA, which is a um, you know, database. And we also have um, data intelligence, SAP data intelligence, which is a kind of data fabric that helps you, um, you know, kind of orchestrate, um, discover, enrich, connect different um, data, right? Different data set together um, to get some uh, business insights, right? So this is more or less the vision of SAP in our uh, AI portfolio, okay? So now let's have um, a look more specifically on uh, chatbots, right? So I will use the next uh, few minutes to explain you uh, one of the example of the multiple uh, ways that we use AI within SAP. And um, so the, the statement is the following, um, this is just an example, right? But of course, a kind of sad examples that we have in the uh, last uh, months and last years uh, with the COVID-19, right? We realized that uh, whether customers and employees are really struggling with the new 
um, behavior that they have to develop by working, for instance, from home or not being able to go to their companies or to going to a shop or to interact with each other. So basically, um, we say that um, many, many companies or let's say most of the companies weren't really uh, prepared for this, um, of course, for this pandemic, but also for this new way to interact with their employees and with their um, uh, customers, right? Which means that problems like, um, you know, um, support center that weren't really uh, prepared for a peak of a request from um, uh, customers or also some very old school software or processes into the company where uh, people that is um, uh, that are working remotely can't access or don't understand where they can find any information or whatever because what happened is that before they were just like knocking the door uh, after and just asking an information, but now they have to go through um, new software or you know new let's say habits of interacting with their um, you know digital tools that they are among their enterprises. So basically, nobody were prepared about that, and it creates a lot of lack of um, you know. Um, uh, lack of trust um, for the customer with their brand, lack of productivity because uh, we took a lot of time to just adapt to that and then, well, all the times that we take to discover and use the software, we don't use it uh, very smartly to do another very important task, right? So lack of productivity, lack of trust. Um, of course, um, many companies lost uh, also many, many customers as I would I say thanks, but not thanks, but due to this to this pandemic. So really kind of create a kind of chaos, right? And one of the tools that exist, so it's not the only tool, but one of the tools that exist to improve that are chatbots. Because basically chatbots can really help in the uh, in the daily life of customer and or employees in order to interact with companies, right? So basically a chatbot, as you can see on the below part, are able to do three things. The first one is that the chatbot is able to act as a guide. Uh, so basically a chatbot, we know where to find the information. So instead of you going into a website, a database, um, a software, and just clicking on the menu, the option and whatever, and don't know where to find the information, you just ask the chatbot and the chatbot knows where it is, right? It just gives you a link or it redirects you, refresh the page automatically, right? So the chatbot is your guide within some processes. The second one is uh, that the chatbot can execute some task for you, right? Some routine task for you. So again, instead of you going into some tedious and repetitive task and go and say, okay, so I have to open um, this page and then fill this formula and click on the button and whatever, um, the chatbot will just ask you, okay, what do you want to do? So you say, so, okay, I want to, I don't know, to take a leave, for instance, in my company, but I don't want to go into all this process and click on my HR software and whatever. So the chatbot will, just, okay, you want to take a leave. So here is the questions that you have. When do you want? Uh, for which reasons? Are you okay with that? And then you click on, okay. And then everything is automatically created, right? So the chatbot is like, like a point of entry for some of the actions that you would have taken many more time to do um, normally, right? And the third one, which is on the right part, is um, Q&A, um, question, answer. I have a question, the chatbot gets the answer very quickly. So this is uh, exactly what I was telling you at the beginning of this presentation, right? So instead of um, you browsing a lot of websites, uh, PDF, documents, and whatever, you just ask the chatbot, and the chatbot possibly get the answer and will give, you, give it to you in matter of seconds, right? So it will save you a lot of time and also a lot of energy, right? So this is, for instance, um, possible through AFAQ uh, chatbots that you can build. And of course, the interest of that is that it's available 24 seven. And it, it is also the big difference between humans and machines is that, for instance, if you take a support center, sometimes the support center is not available and say, okay, you have to call tomorrow morning, but the chatbot will always answer to you, right? So a quick example of uh, um, how a chatbot can um, deliver really a, a, a huge business value, right? Um, so as I say, for instance, um, customer support, right? So this is a very common example that we all pass through. So instead of, you know, 
um, hanging the phone and then waiting for a long time and then hopefully get the answer. Just talk to the chatbot, ask your question and say, okay, I want to, um, I don't know, modify my contract or change my email address. So I had a problem with my computer or whatever. You do all of that through the chatbot instead of doing that into the traditional channel channels. Um, the second one on the bottom left corner is, uh, for instance, in the company, right? Um, where um, instead of, you know, uh, having um, to uh, really take the end of a customer in his buying journey, you can just put the chatbot and then the chatbot will guide again the user. You, you, you remember this example that I took with the e-commerce uh, website, right? Where, where we have sometimes a web chat appearing. This is exactly the case. So the customer will be guided through all the buying journey, right? It's just, of course, a, a few examples. And sometimes the chatbot can even get some feedback and put some polls or whatever. So you can really enrich the, the buying journey of the, of the customer. Um, and um, also everything about uh, employees in their daily life. So HR topic, right? So I want to take some leave. I want to check my pay sleep or whatever. Um, and also everything about health. So we have some very cool example of um, a COVID-19 chatbot with a symptom checker or whatever. So again, um, it will just accelerate all the processes because the user will just have to chat with the chatbot and the chatbot knows exactly what he has to, um, what he has to ask and what is the answer to the question. Uh, so this is basically the uh, way that we work at SAP Concessional AI. So what do you get? It's a chatbot building platform. So you basically build um, a chatbot from A to Z. So you train the data set to uh, teach to the chatbot how to recognize the question of the uh, users, right? So um, uh, then you build the conversation flow. So once the chatbot knows what the user wants, it just trigger, I don't know, it connect to a system, it recover the information from a website, um, it puts a, a, a image, a new URL or, or, or whatever, right? So uh, this, you build the whole conversation uh, experience and conversation flow. Then you deploy your chatbot into a web chat on a website, uh, into a company software, um, into a social network, into a, a messaging platform, wherever you want. And finally, you monitor, which means that you just analyze the performance of the chatbot over the time, right? Which is super important because obviously you can't build a perfect chatbot in a matter of days. It takes weeks, months in order to improve the way the chatbot understands and answer to the uh, final users. Uh, so some very quick example of... Um, uh, where a chatbot can be interesting in which industry so just some three of a multiple example uh, so banking all the you know this finance industry where uh, as you can see here a chatbot can really handle multiple uh, you know conversation uh, or actions uh, also in the health so this is the example that i was taking we have um, um, an hospital in the us uh, which uh, used uh, which use uses sorry uh, covid-19 uh, chatbots right and then helping a lot and a lot of patients and just um, you know uh, relieve a bit all this uh, pressure that hospital gets with many people coming at the same place at the same time and also on the retail um, uh, industry so we have a, a, a very uh, examples that i uh, unfortunately can't tell you for a uh, legal reason but we have a, a very famous brand luxury french brand um, which is using a chatbot to improve again the uh, buying experience so we are coming uh, gently into the end. Uh, so some key takeaways that I want to share with you, which means some interesting information that you have to, to get uh, out of this, um, of this presentation. So what is that artificial intelligence? So I believe that you understood that. Uh, so artificial intelligence, this is the definition that we, that we found here, is the simulation of human intelligence processes by machine and computer system, which means that the machine, the computers, the system can understand how the human is acting and kind of replicate that by themselves. So this is what globally artificial intelligence means. The second question that we put at the, in the title of this presentation is how will change our life, job, and future? So I would say that it's in three aspects. The first one is that um, artificial intelligence supports employee in their daily work. So this is what we, what I explained, right? So employee, but also customer and also individuals like you, like me, right? Uh, the second one is that um, artificial uh, intelligence is um, helping 
um, employees doing their jobs more effectively, faster, right? So no more lack of productivity. Everything is just improved thanks to AI, right? And um, also we think that um, they can use the time. So employees can use the time that they saved in order to dedicate or to devote themselves to more valuable tasks. So this is what I was saying just right before, right? So this is really how it will improve because it's not just like, okay, so the AI is just uh, re helping the machine replacing me. But that's not that. It's replacing you in, again, tedious, repetitive, and, and um, low interest tasks so that you can just dedicate for your company, for the benefit of your company and your own benefit to valuable tasks. So this is where really it will improve um, the future, the business future, and also the daily future, the daily personal future. And last but not least, uh, should we be afraid or excited? So this is the, you know, the big question and the vision that we have for instance, through movies where AI is just uh, like uh, replacing and changing the world. Uh, so of course, as you can imagine, it's not really the case. Um, so it's uh, uh, the, the first thing is that it's very important to know that we are a long way from AI replacing the humans, right? And, and again, this is not the uh, interest. This is not um, the, the, the purpose of AI to replace totally humans. They will just help humans. So this is the second point. AI will just support human in order to save some time, in order to help them in their decision, in order to help them going through business processes, right? So this is why, in my opinion, in SAP opinion, we shouldn't be afraid of AI, but most of all, excited of how AI can help us. So that being said, we are um, at the end. So I know that we are still um, a bit, uh, unfortunately, out of time, but uh, maybe we will uh, pick up two questions. So I will see, um, I will see maybe, uh, I will take, okay, two questions that I got here popped up. Uh, oh, okay, so that's very interesting. Um, how, uh, no, can the SAP AI products be combined? Um, that, that's, that's a very interesting question. So I already um, must have touched this point. So of course, yes, because as you can, as you learn in, into this session, um, AI is not a product. AI is behind and enhancing some SAP products, right? This is how AI is here. Um, so basically we have different products, different services that helps on a very specific topic. So um, an example that I could take, um, yeah, let, let's take a, a very uh, simple example. Um, you have uh, a chatbot, for instance, that you want to combine with service ticket intelligence. So basically you are on a customer support, okay? So you are just chatting with uh, the, the chatbot. So the chatbot say, okay, so I have a problem with my computer and blah, blah, blah. And then uh, at the end, the chatbot, unfortunately, is not able to really answer you, right? Because it reached its, its limit. So what the chatbot will do is that it will create a ticket. So basically, the chatbot won't create a ticket, but it will rely on another service that we call service ticket intelligence that I already talked about. And these services will just extract information from the conversations that you previously had with the chatbot. So it will analyze the conversation, analyze the priority, extract the, the, the problematic, extract, I don't know, information like your name or whatever, and then categorize it so that the human agent in the support will be able to just take over the lead of this process, right? This is one of the multiple examples that we have. We should also think about, well, I don't know, um, yeah, document extraction, for instance. So you just, you have a chatbot again, and you just upload the document uh, through the chatbot, an invoice, for instance, uh, you are uh, a sales in your company. And then you just upload an invoice into the chatbot and then the chatbot go document extraction to, to the document extraction services, which then extract all the information into the invoice, the price, the items, and again, the, I don't know, the, 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 the providers or whatever. And then it will put it into a database or in any other SAP system, right? So this is another way to combine um, the two. Um, and let me see. Okay, let's do for a very last question. Uh, how have chatbots evolve over time and what is the future for this technology um <laughs> that's a wide question um i i see maybe two aspects in that uh, into the evolution of chatbots the first one is that chatbots went from 
um, a nice to have, like a new tool to a true assistant, right? So before, because chatbot wasn't invented at the beginning of 2021, it's like it's existing it's like 10 or more years than that. So before it was like, wow, there is a chatbot. I will try to click on it and okay, it can tell me what is the weather outside. So, wow, that's really cool. Um, so this was, I mean, kind of joke, but this was how a chatbot was before, like uh, kind of, you know, you don't really know what it is about, right? And now a chatbot is really an assistant. This is why we are working, for instance, at ACP on what we call a digital assistant. You know, there's that, it's a tool that really improves the way that you are using a software. So it's enriching your, uh, let's say, your relation um, with the software. And um, again, it knows uh, what to ask you. It knows how to help you, uh, where to guide you. Um, you can just accelerate some processes, asking whatever you want. So it comes to a real assistant, right? And I would say the second point, which is also super important, is that now the chatbot, more than ever, is um, really having, I mean, you can have more than ever a, a human conversation with the chatbot, which before wasn't the case at all, which means that before the, let's say, conversation that you had with the chatbot was super guided. Like the chatbot was saying, okay, what do you want to do? Option one, two, three, just click, please. So you click and then other question and you click and whatsoever, right? So it's like, you, you can't go outside of this conversation if not the chatbot will like collapse. Now this is not the case at all. Thanks to natural language understanding or natural language processing, you, the chatbot can understand you, uh, the ways that you express yourself. So if you want to make a big sentence or just a few keywords or whatever, the chatbot will just understand thanks to the training, thanks to a performance data set. The chatbot will understand what you want to do, right? And then also answer, um, uh, in a smart way, right? So you don't have any more to be like to, to follow a very guided conversation, but you can just be you as if you were with another human, right? So this is, in my opinion, the two um, biggest aspects. Um, yeah, so um, we are now <laughs> at the end of this uh, uh, presentation. So again, if you have other questions, uh, I see that there are um, uh, other questions in the chat. So just feel free to contact me there is the email uh, on the last slide and also we provided some very useful link uh, in the appendix if you want to know more about ai if you want to know more about chatbots um so just feel free to um i mean see all those links and visit uh, the different asap uh, pages and again feel free to contact me whenever you want so that's all for me and we have uh, also another poll for the session evaluation so thanks everyone and uh, see you soon.